Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you my uh, last video of the day for the WWE Championship Read Aloud series. Um, I am now going to be uh, reading chapter 29. This chapter starts on page 237 and ends on page 242, so it's not very a very long chapter. Um, this chapter is called um, A Wrestling God. If, if you want to check out uh, chapters 1 through uh, 28, make sure to click on that playlist right up here. And let's just get right into this one. John Bradshaw Layfield's WWE Championship victory over Eddie Guerrero at the Great American Bash shocked the sports entertainment world. At the time, he was approaching 40 with his best years becoming a faded memory. And even though he was at his best, he was seen by many as nothing more than a mid-card superstar. Uh, there were several times during the course of my career that I thought it would never happen for me, says JBL, especially around 1997 when the guy who was head of creative, Vince Russo, just didn't like me. He didn't re really, see, he didn't really see me, see much value in me. Um, he stuck me and Ron Simmons together because, as he put it, what else do they do? What else do they have to do? If things stayed the same for me, there's no way I would have ever had the WWE Championship run. Things briefly began to look up for JBL following Russo's departure uh, from WWE, but a strain of bad luck set him back once again. In 2002, JBL was in line for a series of high-profile matches with Stone Cold Steve Austin. The rivalry would have surely elevated the struggling superstar to heights he had never reached before. Um, but right before they were able to square off, Austin quit, leaving JBL out of the biggest opportunity of his career. With Stone Cold out, the big Texan was forced to back into the new defunct hardcore division, where he regularly battled perennial per mid-carders. Johnny Stamboli, Just Incredible, and Sean Stasiak. JBL also fought the injury bug, but he um, battled back each time. Eventually, his number was called again. When I tore my biceps, I wondered if I would ever get back in the wind, says JBL. My good years were behind me, and I didn't know if I would be worth, if it would be worth if it would be worth it coming back. But good fortune smiled on me because of the bad fortunes of others. Big Show was hurt. Undertaker was hurt. Kurt Angle was hurt. Brock Lesnar had just left the company. They needed a guy immediately to step up against Eddie Guerrero. And fortunately, I was in the right place at the right time. The right place was North Volk, Virginia. The right time was June 27, 2004, just moments before JBL walked out to face Guerrero for the WWE Championship. Pat Patterson turned to him and said, I hope you do well out there. For your sake, even though, even then, minutes before he could have, he would have, he, he would have the title wrapped up firmly around his waist, JBL was still being met with criticism, but he didn't let it bother him. Instead, he drew upon past experiences to help get through the gigantic match. I remember going back to, to the first time I wrestled Kevin Von Erich for the NWA Championship 15 years before what calls JBO. I remember being overwhelmed by the match. It was a horrible match, not because of Kevin, but because of me. I was in awe of both Kevin and the magnitude of the match. Heading into the match with Eddie, I remember thinking no matter what was going to happen, I was going to go out there and be myself. Sink or swim, um, it was going to work. JBL was right. He defeated Guerrero for the WWE Championship, a feat many thought he could never accomplish. It was unbelievable, especially after I struggled for so long. I broke in back in the old circuit days, wrestling in the carnivals in Europe. Becoming WWE Champion was something I didn't think would ever happen. It was something that I always wanted, but I thought I ha it had passed me by. After using some help from Kurt Angle to 
defeat Guerrero in a steel cage rematch on SmackDown, JBL was met w with the gravest threat, threat to his championship reign, Undertaker. Over the next several months, JBL managed to narrowly um, escape the Phenom's deadly clutches on several occasions thanks to the help of his cabinet, Orlando Jordan and the Basham brothers. Um, eventually, the dastardly way the dastardly way in which the champ eked by Undertaker started to wail on fans. And this is a, a picture of JBL with uh, JBL with cabinet members Orlando Jordan and Amy Wemba. And this is a picture of JBL winning the uh, WWE Championship. I enjoy being a bad guy, brags JBL more than five years later. A lot of people had a hard time being a bad guy, but my success was in the character. I preferred leaving the arena and having people throw things at my car and tell me that I didn't deserve to be WWE Champion. I really wanted to get under people's skin, and, that I, and I think I did. I understood that <coughs> character very well. I saw it a million times growing up, the old... The rich old guy who threw money at everybody else, but you couldn't do anything about it because he owned the town. I think I walked to the ring in a jacket with a towel around my neck. Really got under people's skin, too. I got the idea of that in the gym. I was sitting there and saw this guy walking around in a jacket and towel. I remember thinking how mad it made me. I wanted to slap him, and then I thought, hey, what's... what?" That's what JBL would do, so I, I did it. What I, um, what a lot of people don't understand is that JBL has no redeeming qualities. Zero. Plus, he was not a good wrestler. I broke in while in Japan. I n knew how to wrestle, but late in my career, there were times when I just didn't have the physical ability. JBL took being hated by the fans to a whole new level. To him, it was a, is an art form. He carefully calculated his every move. It was important that he did, that he never did anything to warrant adulation from the fans. He even admits to intentionally competed at a lower level than his opponents, so that when he finally did win, the fans would become even more irate. This gave him them a false sense of security, a belief that their favorite was going to topple the self-proclaimed wrestling god. That was the key to my success from Flex JBL. By the 2005 Royal Rumble, JBL had earned the distinction of being the longest reigning WWE Champion since Shawn Michaels' first reign back in 1996. It was an amazing accomplishment for a man many thought was too old to be champion. Closing in on 40, the former mid carder was quickly becoming the owner of become an owner of one of the most successful WWE Championship reigns in recent history. The, resex, the success of the rejuvenated JBL continued at the Royal Rumble, where the champ once again used some help from his cabinet to dispose of Kurt Angle and Big Show in a triple threat match. While the victory was certainly huge for JBL, it was somewhat overshadowed by WWE's next generation of champions, Batista and John Cena, who emerged as the final two combatants at, of the Royal Rumble match. With a trip to WrestleMania 21 on the line, Batista delivered a devastating spine buster to John Cena before throwing him over the top rope for the win. Obviously, there was some other stuff that happened in that match that I'll talk about in a different video. With the victory, the animal was awarded the right to choose which title he wanted to challenge for at WrestleMania. JBL's WWE Championship or Triple H's World Heavyweight Championship. Many assumed he would select the WWE title considering his then alliance with the lions to the game. But Batista shocked everyone when he went against the grain and elected to face his faction mate Triple H. When Batista decided to take on the game, not only did he effectively sever all ties with Evolution, but he also left an opening for another superstar to slip in and challenge JBL for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. That void was eventually filled by Cena, who outlasted Orlando, Jordan, Booker T, and Kurt Angle in a number one contenders tournament to earn his first of what would eventually become many WrestleMania main events. And then that's the end of the chapter. I will cover uh, that chapter in the next video of John Cena. But that's pretty much it, guys. 
Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, please make sure to subscribe to my CM Brothers and Owen the Talking Nader channel. Actually, before I finish it off, too, obviously, everybody knows I don't like JBO. I don't like his personality because we know he's a huge bully backstage. I've talked about it enough times, and that's why he was probably able to really play off his character really well. But whatever. Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel as well. And thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you later.